Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Beyond Church here in Lancaster, South Carolina. I am gathered together with my household of faith, and we're going to be talking about this morning the decision to lead. I've been talking about decisions this morning, so if you're taking notes, you want to write this at the top of your paper, you can write down the decision to lead. Let me check all my settings real quick, make sure everything is good. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 8, first of all. Somebody want to volunteer to read one verse of scripture for me? Anybody? Romans chapter 8, I want to read verse 14. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. Read it real loud, Philip. You got it over there. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, he said, these are the sons of God. I focused on with you many months ago on becoming a son of God. We know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But he became the captain of our salvation that he might mean lead many sons. And the Bible tells us that as many as believed on him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, even as many as believed on his name. I've been talking about decisions lately. If you caught my wisdom talk, broadcast last Saturday night, I talked about four important decisions. Some things that I've come to understand about life is that, that life is made up of decisions. Say that with me. Life, life. is made up made of, decisions. of decisions. I found that decisions, they determine my outcome and they determine my future. Good morning, Nancy Lee. Decisions determine my outcome and they determine my future. I'm focusing on Romans 8 and 14 with you this morning because he says, the Apostle Paul writing here says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Find with me Proverbs chapter 1 this morning as we start to lay some foundation for some things here. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about the decision to lead. The decision to lead. I believe that all true, great leadership stems from being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are people that are great leaders. There are people that are good leaders. There are people who are leaders in the world, leaders in finance, leaders in business, whatever. They may not necessarily be led by the Holy Spirit. But I said leadership stems from being led by the Holy Spirit. I believe that the Holy Spirit is the greatest leader that's on planet Earth. He will never steer you wrong. He will never guide you into the wrong place. The Bible says that he always leads us into truth. He's the greatest teacher. He's the greatest mentor. He's the greatest communicator. And that's my desire is to be led by him. I found that with leadership, there are two different types of leaders. And I just mentioned them a moment ago. There are good leaders and then there are great leaders. I found that a good leader can lead a great organization. A good leader can lead a great organization. But there's a difference of what determines somebody from being a good leader and a great leader. You can have a great organization, great church, great business, and just have a good leader. But a, a great leader separates himself by making other leaders. The good leader doesn't create other leaders. 
but a great leader will create other leaders. Let me say that again. A great leader will create other leaders. I have different models of things, and I like to think in shapes. And I'll try to, uh, I'm going to just show this to y'all. Some of you never been, went through some of my entrepreneur classes. Some of you here did. I taught on leadership a lot. And a lot of people, when they think of leading, when I say the word lead, what do you think of? What's the first word that pops into your mind other than lead? What do you think of? If you don't have anything, then you're just a blank piece of paper. That's fine, too. I'd rather work with a blank piece of paper than one that's been scribbled all over. When I say lead, what do you think of? Follow. Follow. Instruct. Okay. Anybody else? A lot of our concepts of leadership are, I like to use these in terms of shapes. I've got this first one up here. It looks like a, a pyramid, right? I got this shaded in area. A lot of people think of, I'll show this for you people, everybody that's with me. A lot of people think in these terms. Somebody who's leading from the top down. Then I've got a couple of other ones over here that I've taught people on. And this one's the one that I call the guy that's out front. He likes to lead from front. And then we have this kind of newer concept that I call a farce and is not possible or true. And it's called servant leadership. This one's a real buzzword with people right now. But you can't lead from behind. I have a whole different thought concerning because we think in in leadership in terms of pyramid structure. I think of leadership in a whole different structure. I, I think of it in terms of a wheel, in a circle. And the reason that I think in leadership in terms of a circle is because, and you notice on my circle here, I have lead right in the middle. And this is what I believe makes the difference between a good leader and a great leader. Because a great leader doesn't just create followers. He creates other leaders. And he does that by placing himself in the center of everything. Not at the top, not out front, not behind, but in the center of everything. And this will begin to make a vast difference in leadership style. I'm not saying that one is wrong, but I am saying that one is better than the other. Okay? Leadership is something that you have to choose. Sometimes we can get thrown into a place of leadership. I've seen many people that were promoted to, to places of leadership, maybe in a workplace, uh, and they may not have been ready for that venture. But nonetheless, I'm pretty confident when I say this, Asa. Leadership is, leaders are not born, they're created. I can teach anyone leadership skills. Leadership is simply a set of skills. Going back to Romans 8 and 14, it says, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? Well, this means that the, lead, the Holy Spirit is a leader. He will provide leadership to us. Does that mean that he's out front? Does that mean that he's on top? Does that mean that he's behind me? Well, it's it's kind of all of those, but more, more prominently, he's within me. Do you see where I'm coming from? Why I'm saying someone who gets right in the center of everything. It was one of the words that Jesus used for the Holy Spirit. He said that, he said that when, when I leave, I'm going to send another comforter. The word there is parakletos. It means someone who comes alongside of you. Someone who comes alongside of you. 
So leadership is all about decisions. Let me say that again to you. Leadership is all about decisions. Say that with me. Leadership, leadership. leadership. is all about decisions. It's all about decisions. Life is made up of decisions. And leadership is no different. Some people may feel intimidated about leading something. You know, if I, if I asked you, I want you to lead next Sunday. I want you to lead the message or I want you to lead us in prayer. You know, sometimes people may feel intimidated because they feel like that they're out front or that they have to be the person on top. I found this about many leaders. Most leaders are not the, the most knowledgeable person. And a great leader knows that he's not the most knowledgeable person, but he'll surround himself with people who know more than himself. Yes. He's not intimidated by people who know more than him. He actually is seeking to draw them in. So I'm going to do two different things here. First is A. What I want you to understand, A, about the decision to lead. Because I cannot view myself as coming into a place of becoming a great leader unless I create other leaders. I can lead us and lead us to be a great whatever, household of faith, a great church, a great body of people. And I can do that by becoming just a good leader. But that's not my objective. So that's the first thing I want you to know about leadership. Is leadership is about decision making. Write that on your paper. Just put A or number one, decision making. Now leadership is making tough decisions. Sometimes you got to make the tough decision. Sometimes it may be the wrong decision. And a lot of times you won't know that until afterwards. But somebody ultimately has got to make the decision. And that's what being a leader is all about, is making a decision. Look at somebody beside you and tell them there's a decision that you need to make. Now look at the person on the other side of you and tell them the same thing. There's a decision that you need to make. See, I don't like indecisive people. You, you can't lead, if, you're, if you become indecisive, you can't lead anything. You just got to make a decision. A lot of times making the decision is answering a question that nobody's asking. And sometimes it's just asking the question that nobody else is asking. So I've learned as a leader, you have to ask questions. I asked a question of you all this morning. I asked you, can you help me? Can you help me do this? Why? Because I'm getting other people involved and other people that it is going to directly affect because I know that once I'm, I haven't made a decision, but once I make a decision, it's going to determine what? It's going to determine outcomes. It's going to determine future. I'm not being indecisive. I'm simply drawing other people into this because I know that the Holy Spirit uses other people and speaks through other people other than to myself. I trust that the Holy Spirit will bring the right information through the right voice. I believe that. I trust that. Sometimes with being... In leadership is seeing things that are not seen or seeing an underlying problem. Doug asked me, you know, what are you looking for? I said, I don't know yet. I'll know it when I see it, though. Sometimes you've got to see the unseen. There's something that I'm not seeing, but I'm going to know it when I see it. When I, I remember when I was going to buy a motorcycle, right? April would ask me, kept asking, what kind of you want? What kind of I have no idea. I said, I'll know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. Philip sent me a picture of it, and I was like, that's the one. 
I didn't know what it looked like. I just knew I'm going to buy one and the right one will come. Why? Because I expect, I expect the Holy Spirit to lead me in everything. Do you? Do you expect the Holy Spirit to lead you in everything? The right car, the right house. Sometimes, and I'm still talking to you about decision making, sometimes it's seeing the direction that you need to go when, when everybody else sees nothing. When everybody else sees nothing, you have to see a direction. I was thinking about Moses when I thought about this. I mean, they're backed up against the wall in the Red Sea. Where are you going to go? You're enclosed by your enemies. And God says, turn around. Not and go back where you came from, but face the sea. This is why I'm saying it's very important to be led by the Holy Spirit because where you see an impossibility, he sees, I'm going to perform a miracle. And he, Moses turns around and looks at the sea and God says, stretch out your staff. He just started following instruction. Following instruction, why? Because God is going to go before you. He's going to go behind you. He's going to go with you. And now more importantly, he's going inside of me. Because the Holy Spirit is inside of me. I'm going to stop and tell you this this morning. No person that's in this room with me or listening to me, my Facebook, has to be afraid of becoming a leader. If anything, if you, st if you stay around me, I am, I am grooming you to become a leader somewhere, somehow in life. If you're listening to me, I've already made a decision not only to lead, but I've made a decision, Will, to teach other people how to become leaders. That's what I desire to surround myself with in my life. And that's going to be the second part of what I talk about today. So you can write down number two or B, you can write down will making, not, not my will, but W. H E E L wheel making like the wheel on a car, on a car, the wheel on a motorcycle, a wheel. So the first part of what I'm talking to you about this morning is decision making. And the second part is going to be about wheel making. So I'm decision making. Say that with me. Decision making, decision -making. and wheel making. wheel making. The important part here of decision making is this. The decision-making process is always filled with choices. Sometimes you may feel like you're only faced with one option. This is what I was talking to you all about this morning. Many times we become limited in our mind of there's choice A and choice B. And I'm looking for, no, God's not limited by choice A and choice B. What is it I'm not seeing? Because that's what it is to have vision. Vision is to see the unseen, biblically. Vision is not, when the Bible talks about in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. He's not talking about where there's blind people. He's talking about people who cannot see anything other than what there is. That's what I'm looking for. A leader learns how to speak. You should write this one down for yourself. A leader learns how to speak the, vi the language of vision. That's what he's going to talk. He's going to talk about what is not seen, what is not done. I'm not trying to repeat what other people are doing. Why would I try to repeat what other people are doing? Because they're already doing it. Why would I need to do it? As a leader, I'm looking 
to innovate. I'm looking to bring change. I'm looking for progression. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm talking about? Why do I need to do what others are already doing if I'm truly a leader? I'm simply just following what they're doing, just doing it on my own. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what hasn't been done. That's called being innovative. You know, when Thomas Edison set out to create a light bulb, he wasn't working off the oil lamp model. He wasn't trying to make a better oil lamp. He set out to create something completely different, something that was going to change how everything operated. Wherever you're leading at, if you're leading, you've, I know that there are things that, that may seem comfortable to you, but you never lead by what is comfortable to you. You have to lead by what is necessary. See, people could say this to me. Well, you know, Todd, I wouldn't be comfortable doing what you're doing. I wouldn't be comfortable in front of a camera. I wouldn't be comfortable standing in front of people talking to them. Well, I wasn't either. Do you think that, that I just came out of my mother's womb and, and was all of a sudden, you know, I'm going to get up and talk in front of people? No, much the opposite. But I don't do what is comfortable to me. I do what is necessary to move forward. So I had to make a decision. Am I going to do this or not? Was there times I was afraid? Yes. Was there times I was uncomfortable? Absolutely. Leading is never a comfortable position. Why? Because you're going to bear the majority of the responsibility for the outcome. If you go in the wrong way or the wrong place, people are going to blame you. This is all we see in the world of politics is blame, blame, blame. And it doesn't matter who's in lead, somebody's going to be blaming them for something. What am I looking for in the choices that I make? Here's, the, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a right, a right voice. I'm looking for the right person. Why? Because these are going to lead to right choices. Bishop Kreitz always said it this way. Right voices lead to right choices. Right choices. I'm looking for the right voice. Because number one, when you're in leadership, there's going to be all kinds of voices. There's probably a hundred people you could tune into or thousands right now <coughs> on Facebook. You could be listening to who knows. You could go back and find old Jack Van Impey uh, teachings or whatever. There's a million different voices that you could listen to, but I'm simply looking for the right voice. I'm looking for the right person and identifying which one is the right one can be the most difficult part. If you're an employer, if you are a manager, if you're a supervisor, if you're a CEO, it doesn't matter where you are. You're, if you're looking for someone to fit or fill a place you guys need to listen to me because you may think, well, I just work for somebody right now. That may not be the case a year from now. That may not be the case five years from now. If you're looking to fill a job, I've, I've hired people, I've fired people, I've been in leadership positions. You can find somebody that will get it done, but they may not be the right person. You can find somebody for the job. A lot of times what I find myself doing is I'm looking for who's going to take over. Because have you decided to stay where you are? Do you see what I'm saying? See, I've watched people in leadership positions that they don't want people under them to advance because they've decided they're not going any further. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they've got to keep you here and they can be a good leader. 
But there's a vast difference when a great leader comes in. He says, I'm going to take them all the way up here. And even if I can push them past. Why? Because he's decided I'm not staying here. The only way that I can advance is to cause everyone around me to advance. Are you with me? This is how I approach the world of finance and money. I can know all these things and they can benefit me. But I have found that you will only go to a certain point until you start advancing other people. Because when you change other people's lives, it creates something. Listen to me very closely. This is a bonus for you. When you change other people's lives, it creates something that you can't buy, and it's called loyalty. Mm -hmm. I said when you change someone else's life, and they know that it was because of you, you create something that you can't buy. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how much fame you come to. I don't care what your wildest dream is. You cannot create loyalty without changing someone else's life. Why do you think the apostles were so loyal to Jesus that, that one of the apostles wrote that they loved not their life unto death? The only reason they loved not their life unto death is because they were radically loyal to to Jesus. Why? Because they knew he had changed their life and nobody could have done this except him. And they became so loyal that they would die for him because they knew he died for them. You see what I'm saying? All right, let's move to the second part. I want you to, to grab Proverbs, Proverbs chapter one, Proverbs chapter one, and I want you to look at verse 5 with me. All of my children should know this verse. I've drilled it into them over and over and over and over. Does anybody want to quote it? I know it. You know it. Even my six-year-old over here says, I know it. What is it? A wise man will what? A wise man will hear. And will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Say it with me. A wise man will hear. And will, what will happen? Will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain wise counsel. Here's two very important points for you to learn in life. Many times it's not your lack of faith, it's your lack of learning. God said that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He didn't say they're destroyed for a lack of faith. You don't know what you don't know. And the only way that you will know is by learning to listen. Learning, let me say that again, learning to listen. That's a skill. This is what I believe one of the greatest skills that you will ever develop as a leader. A leader is not always about talking. It's about listening. Yes. You got to listen and you got to listen very closely. When I talked on wisdom talk last Saturday night, I talked about the decision to listen. It's a decision to listen. You know, you can talk from now until a kingdom come. And if someone is not listening, you're not doing any good. Matter of fact, anybody who's not listening to you, you need to find an exit from their life. Because mm -hmm. if you're just beating your gums and beating them in the wind, and you know how that you will find out whether someone is listening? Give an instruction. If they can't follow an instruction, they've just disqualified themselves for any future instruction. If I give you an instruction as a leader and I say, you need to do this, this, and this, 
and you don't do this, this, and this, and then you come back and asking me, well, what should I do? I'm going to say, well, did you do that, that, and that? A lot of times you're looking for God to, to take you to the next. I hear people all the time say, I'm ready to go to the next level. How are you going to go to the next level and you haven't done what you were already instructed to do? I found that the Holy Spirit gives me an instruction. The conversation doesn't change until I follow the instruction. Well, I'm getting no amens on that one. Listen to what Proverbs 1 and 5 is talking about. I'm going to focus on wise counsel. And this is why I'm talking to you about making a will. Will making. Not making your, your, your final will and testament, but making a will. I'm making a decision, but part of my decision making is to make a will. This word wise counsel here is a combination of Hebrew words. One means, part of it means to steer with a rope. The other means to guide by a plan. The root of this word comes from where someone is bound so tightly that they begin to writhe in pain. And the other part of this means that it can be measured with a rope. <coughs> Listen to what I just said. Wise counsel, this is what I've had to discover about wise counsel. Some of the wisest counsel you will ever receive is by people who have been through some of the most painful experiences of life. This is why it's important to listen for the sound of pain. Who's been through pain? See, I got to a point in my life where I said, no one around me understands what I'm going through because they've never been where I've been. They've never done what I've done. This is why I always, and, and y'all can listen to this if you want to or not on this this is why I don't believe in the, the modern model of how the church operates because we have like this elder, an elder ran church with a pastor who's one of the elders. I can go ahead and tell you something about this, this whole model. Most people won't see this unless they've been in this position. Number one, the Bible never instructs the church to be led by elders. And the reason for this is because if you're the pastor of the church and no one of those elders have ever pastored a church, it automatically makes you the smartest one at the table. You know why? Because they've never done what you've done. They've never been what you have been and they've never had to stand in that place. So therefore, it makes you the smartest one at the table because you have experiences that no one else has experienced and they can't personally identify with it. So how are they going to know if you're wrong if they've never done it? See, this is where, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get some things under your skin here in this way. You've got to have somebody in your life that can tell you when you're wrong. And if somebody's never done, listen, if I went, if Philip over here sent me out tomorrow under his company and he said, here you go, Todd, I want you to go fix this heat and air condition system. And I went out there and started tearing it apart. And he calls me about an hour later, you got a thing done? Hmm. I'm still working on it. Calls me two hours later. You got a thing done? Hmm. By the end of the day, he called me and said, man, you ain't got a thing done? Uh-uh. I'm probably going to have to come back tomorrow. And he's thinking in his mind, I could have fixed that in 15 minutes. Well, do you know what the problem is? I ain't never fixed a heat and air condition system. And it might take me a month to figure out what's going on. 
unless somebody comes along who knows what they're doing and has been there and done it. And he could probably tell me on the phone what needs to happen. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Because uh, yeah. if he says, well, it's capacitor, the, the capacitor needs to come out and I'm over here pulling everything else out, you know why? Because I don't know what I'm doing. Because I ain't never done it. So how can you have someone leading something that has never done it? Do you see what I'm saying? How can you have people making decisions over an organization that have never done it? No, that is, that is bogus. That is a farce. That is people living in a fantasy. That's hard for the church world to hear because they're used to, this is how we've always done it. This is how everybody else does it. Well, I'll tell you, there's a problem when you have about 15 to 1,800 pastors every week who quit. You know why they do? Because they don't know anybody who's going through what they're going through. And there's nobody that they can talk to. This is why I was looking for my way out until, until, until I found somebody who knew what I didn't know, who understood what I didn't understand, who had been there and done it and done it more than once and could identify with where I was at. And tell, see, everybody, I don't care where you are, you, a leader's got to have a leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you may think, well, I have come to the top of my industry. Where else can I go? You still got to have somebody who can tell, can give you instruction and tell you, wait a minute, you can make some adjustments here. You're doing this wrong. This is what I'm talking about with creating a wheel of people around you. <coughs> a leader must have wise counsel. Wise counsel. What does that mean? Wise counsel are not yes. They're not yes men. They're not yes people. Now I'm going to say some things that, that may be shocking to you. So just hold on with me. Yes, people are not your friends. Yes, people, listen, I'm not looking to surround myself with just people I agree with. If you are looking to surround yourself with people you agree with, you are setting yourself up for a failure. Here's the shocking point that I had written down for myself and I'm going to share it with you all. There are people that you don't agree with that are right. Let me say that one more time. There are people that you don't agree with that are right. Now let's all say it together. There are people that I don't agree with that are right. Do you know how many times I've found this to be true in my life? A lot. My spiritual father has given me instructions that I didn't agree with. But in the end, I found out he was right. Did you know that your parents, when they gave you an instruction and you didn't agree with it, did you know who was right? They were. You're not always right. And when you learn that, just that one little simple thing, you're now preparing yourself to become a great leader. I'd say you just became one. You're pre only preparing yourself to become one. You have to learn how to, you have to learn to decide to listen to a different perspective. That is so important. Decide to listen to a different perspective. That's what a great leader does. He looks for somebody who can see it from a different perspective. Do you know why I, this morning I said, I want you to help me look for this. You know why? 
because I already know I'm limited on what I see. Somebody, I'm depending on God to cause somebody, if I don't see it, I'm depending on God for, to cause somebody else to see it. My motorcycle that I'm going to get on and ride to lunch today, I wasn't the first one to see it. He saw it first. But when he sent me the picture, I said, that's it. There wasn't another question. I'm like, hey, you go get, get that thing? It was that quick a decision was made. Why? Because I'm depending. Because that's how God set us up in the body of Christ. As a leader, you're not going to see everything, and you've got to know that. Mm -hmm. If you think you're the see-all, know-all, be-all, you're probably the dumbest of all. And when you're the dumbest of all, you're the last one to know. Everybody else will know. You've been dumb. But you won't. That's why my spiritual father would say to me, you, you're being dumb. You're being real dumb. Nobody else around you knows it yet, but they're going to. But you're dumb. You're being dumb. And if you don't change this, everybody else will soon know that you're dumb. Mm. you got to be able to hear that. Here's why you need wise counsel. Listen real closely to what I'm telling you on this. Does anybody in here know the purpose of wisdom? What is the purpose of wisdom? Listen real closely. Write these things down for yourself. Wisdom is an ability to discern difference, okay? Write that down for yourself. Wisdom is the ability to discern difference. Difference in what? To make the right decision. Wisdom gives you the ability to know the right person, the right voice, in order to lead you to the right choice. It is the ability to discern difference. Difference in people. Difference in places. But that's not wisdom's purpose. Wisdom's purpose is to prevent pain. Wisdom's purpose is to prevent pain. Why do you need wisdom? Thank you. Who in here likes pain? Do you enjoy pain? Do you know when you, you got in the wrong relationship and got your heart broke, it's because you didn't have wisdom. When you had to file for bankruptcy and couldn't figure out what went wrong, you didn't have a money problem. You had a wisdom problem. You experienced pain because you didn't have Wisdom. That's wisdom's purpose. There's two great ways to learn in this life. I've discovered them both. You can either listen, a wise man will hear, and he'll increase in his learning. Or you can go through pain. You can go through pain. Eventually, the pain will become louder than your stubbornness and you'll say, hold on, something ain't right here. Because pain is the proof of disorder. Let me say that again to you. Pain is the proof of disorder. Something's wrong. That's why when you break a bone, nobody in here smiles about it and goes, oh, well, look, that feels great. I've broke my finger. <laughs> no, it's telling you, hey, dummy, something's wrong. Something's real wrong here. Pain is the proof that something is wrong. That's why God will give you wisdom because it will come alongside of you and do a couple of things. It will establish order and leadership for you. See, Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're not structured like I am in the way I think, and I'm probably glad that you're not in some ways. Because, see, I, I, I'll i be one of those people that breaks something, and I'll look at it and say, it ain't broke. Or I'll break a rib and think, it ain't broke. Take me to the chiropractor. The chiropractor looks at it and says, I, ain't nothing. I can't pop nothing back into place here. You got to go to an orthopedic doctor. Because in my mind, my mind will tell me that it, mm -mm. 
My mind will, listen to me, my mind will ignore the pain. It will ignore the pain. That's how stubborn I can be to ignore the pain. Why did I bring this up with wise counsel? Because wise counsel has been through pain. They've been through pain. That's why I told you the word means bound until writhing in pain and you can literally measure it. I heard one pastor say this one time. He said, I don't take counsel from anybody who hadn't been through hell and back and lived to tell about it. But some people have been through hell and back and they only live to tell about the hell and the back. But they haven't lived beyond that because they become stuck in the hell and back. What do I mean by that? A lot of people have attempted things. Listen to what I'm telling you here. A lot of people have attempted things and failed. This is where I had to learn to separate myself from certain people. This is important. Please take this home with you. If you listen to someone who attempted and failed and that's all they ever did, then their perspective becomes this. Impossibility, negativity, despair, failure, or depleted energy. There are very few people who fail at something and then are willing to take a different approach. I remember when I was this little young evangelist and I wanted to go out and win the world to Jesus and I was pounding the concrete day after day and week after week and, and an, an older person said, well, we've already done that and it didn't work. And I was like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't just, and this was an elder of a church. He just told me that what I'm doing doesn't work. Do you see where he's coming from? He's coming from a place of, I did it and it didn't work. You know what my question should have been? Well, then what did? Because if he couldn't provide that for me, then you're listening to the wrong person. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. He presented to me the problem without a solution. I could go to work for Philip and he'd tell me, this guy's got a problem. And I ain't telling you how to solve it because I don't know. How can he be leading me? Do you see what I'm saying? How simple this becomes? How can you lead if you don't know? See, this is the difference in, in your wheel. You've got to get the right people in the wheel because the wheel will do this. I've been where you've been and I've done what you've done and I've felt what you felt and here's what you need to do. Do you see what I'm saying? Everybody with me on that? This is creating the right wheel because everybody here you got here on wheels today, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You rolled on in here, whether it was on a motorcycle or a car. If one of them wheels is flat, you ain't going. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere far and you ain't going nowhere fast. You might go. You got to get the wheel right. Because when the wheel is right, when you create the right wheel, you will create the right movement around you. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Last thing here. Very few people are willing to take a different approach. And my point with that is find people that have been through the pain of failure, but yet they persisted. I do not need around me people who have given up, but yet will tell me they are led by the Holy Spirit. I ain't giving up. There's been a lot of times I've wanted to quit, Joy. I wanted to say, heck with this. I ain't got to do this. I can do something else. 
I can do that. Yes, I can. Sounds good. But am I going to do that? No. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Wherever you are, you've got to keep going. Because you've got to understand that it's bigger than you. April talked about victory and triumph last week. Did you know that your victory and your triumph are bigger than you? Because somebody else is going to need your victory. Somebody else is going to need your triumph, not just you. You don't need to just triumph. Somebody else needs your triumph. Somebody else needs your victory. Because you're going to be the voice of wisdom to them somewhere in the future. You're going to mentor people, spiritual father people. You're going to be the person that speaks into the law. You're going to become their leader. That's what a leader does. He doesn't just talk to you. He doesn't just teach you. He doesn't just instruct you. He's going to give you who he is. I'm giving, I'm giving you who I am right now. This is who I am. I'm not, I'm not here to, to do three points and, and go eat lunch. I'm telling you who I am and that who you are is what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. This has always been about relationship. It's always been about having the right people in your life. You've got to have the right counsel. You've got to be listening to the right people. I hear people, I'll talk to people and they'll, they'll tell me what, what this person is teaching and what that pastor's teaching and what they can tell me every, what everybody else is, is going on and, 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 and what they're hearing. And I'm thinking, what is this producing in your life? Do you know if you listen to the news enough, you're going to be presented with every problem in the world without a solution. Did you know that? Yep, sure. You're going to be presented with every problem in the world without a solution. Because if there was a solution, they wouldn't be talking about it. It'd be solved. I don't focus on the things that I'm not able to solve. I'll let someone else focus on that. Last couple of things, and then I'm done. Listen to this. Leadership does not mean that people will like you. We like to like our leaders and to be liked by them. But that's not leadership. That's called popularity. I have people that think, they think, listen to what I'm about to tell you. I've had, I've had people say to me, well, who's on your side? Who you got in your corner? I got so-and-so in my corner. They believe the same thing that I believe. And I was like, but do you know them? And they said, no. Or they said this kind of thing to me. Well, Pastor so-and-so's got a thousand people in his church. How many you got? Well, that doesn't make him a, a better leader. That just means he's more popular. I can become more popular. There's techniques for popularity. Just because someone has more followers, you better hear what I'm telling you. Someone has more followers does not mean that they are better. Doesn't mean they have more influence, April said. Popularity is not a gauge of great leadership. Sometimes it's much the opposite. Jesus wasn't very popular. Jesus wasn't trying to gather as many people as he could to himself. He was doing much the opposite. He was getting rid of people. If you can't do this, then don't follow me. If you can't do this, then go home. We like to like our leaders and to be liked by them, but that's not leadership, that's popularity. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. You can't effectively lead if popularity is the dominant factor in your decision-making process. If popularity is the dominant factor in your decision, well, if I make this decision, then people, the majority of the people ain't going to like it. 
you have made the wrong decision. If you, this is where the church went wrong with the whole seeker-friendly thing. They were trying to get people into the church by not offending them. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the Bible tells you right off the bat in, in 1 Corinthians, the cross is an offense. It is. You're going to offend people. I'm going to offend people by what I believe, by what I do, the decisions I make. And you know what? It's like my spiritual father said, some will, some won't, and so what? I'm going to do what I do because I'm a leader, not because I'm trying to win a popularity contest. Don't try to win a popularity contest. There's so much more I could share with you here, but I'll leave you with this. Lead by example. Within your will of influence. Lead by example within your will of influence. Thank you, Miss Rollins. Thank you, Christopher. Lead by example. Lead by example. I'll throw this at you. Y'all know who Jay Leno is? Used to do the, the late night show or whatever, comedian. I don't know that much about Jay, but I know this story about him. He was a teenager. Got his first job at a car lot. Washing cars. He said he didn't know what he was doing. He just thought, you just washed the car. But he didn't know that there was right techniques to it. So he says he started washing the cars, and he kind of messed up some cars. Scratched some of the paint, did some other things. His boss came out and said, Jay, I'm just not going to be able to keep you here. I'll have to let you go. He said he made a decision. That night in his life, he said, I decided to go back to the car lot and wash all the cars again. And I believe he washed cars all night until the guy showed back up the next morning. And the guy looked at him and said, what are you doing here? He said, well, I made a decision. I may not be the best, but I decided hey, nobody going to outwork me. And that decision set the course for the rest of his life. I may not be the best, but you won't outwork me. And he said he carried that into every place that he ever went. And he said, that's how I wind up where I'm at. He's had television shows because he said that's how he leads through his work, his work ethic. He knows his strength. He knows his weakness, but he's focused on his strength. And his strength is, you won't outwork me. And he leads that by example. And everyone that's around him, and I'm telling you, when you lead by example, it affects everybody around you. I've carried that into every workplace I've ever been. You won't outwork me. That's how I got promoted. And even when I got promoted, I didn't get promoted so that I could sit there and watch all them work. I would still outwork them. I led by example. Find that thing that makes you a leader and go with it. Make the decision, all right? Got it? Thank y'all for joining me on here today. Thank you, Christopher. Appreciate that. I'm going to close out in prayer with my household of faith today. I'll keep y'all alive while I'm here. Father, we just thank you today that your word says that as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. I'm praying this word over everyone here today that a wise man will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain to wise counsel. Lord, there's decisions that need to be made in every person's life that's listening to me right now. I thank you that a decision is being made I'm not going to go back there. 
I'm going to do this. I'm not going to interact with that person. Or I'm going to make a phone call. There's a decision that needs to be made. And think about the words that are in the book of Joel. You said, there are many that are in the valley of decision. And they're in this valley because they've yet to make a decision. I thank you that the decision is being made. I thank you that right people are coming into their lives. The right voice. They know the right voice and the right people to begin to put into the wheel of their life, the circle. I praise you for that today. We thank you for your leading in our lives, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.